I born as a Muslim. My real name was Muhammad Kamil. I never know any good news you guys had. What I know about Christianity just from your TV and my favorite actor in American uh, TV, it's uh, East Clintwood. Or Clintwood, uh, yeah, East Clintwood, right? That's how you call him. That was my favorite actor. And all I see in your TV, guns, killing, liquor, woman in bikini. That's it. And that's what in the Muslim mind. All around the globe, if you ask any Muslim, what do you think about Christianity? Christianity is Hollywood for Muslims around the world. And I never thought to be a Christian. And why I would become a Christian? To be like this guy. And I have a friend for 12 years, a Christian. 12 years. I wanted you to remember this. Because every time I, I remember this, I, 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 it bothered me. Twelve years, he never told me, Jesus loves you. He never gave me a Bible. He never invited me to his church. Twelve years, a Christian friend. Let me ask you, my friend, <clears throat> when was the last time you give someone a Bible. That's between you and God now. When was the last time you told someone, Jesus loves you? I wanted to pray with you right now. When was the last time? Are you like my friend, 12 years? I sleep in his home. He come to my house. We're spending most of our time together. He never told me Jesus loves you. And one day, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and one day I decided to make fun of him. I said, let me mock him and mock his Christianity. You see, that's what happened. If you are silent, the enemy will attack you. But if you are on the march, the enemy will bow down. And all the power of Satan will be broken. In your life, in the family's life, your friend's life. Christianity, always working, moving. There is no turning back. I told him, can you take me to your church? I'm really interested to know more about your church. And your uh, Christianity. But in fact, I have a plan to mock him, to mock his church, and to make fun of Christianity and go tell Muslims. And he afraid to take me to his church. He thought I would put a bomb in his church. He decided to take me to a different church. <laughs> Look how Christians love each other. Don't bomb my church, bomb the other church. It's okay. And I'm grateful that he take me to this church. Wow. You can imagine, because this, in this church, I got saved. Praise the Lord. And he took me to this church, and I went to a Bible study on Friday in the second floor. I sit in the back watching when the liquor will start when uh, bad things will happen, because that's what's in my mind. And I am here in the church to mock those people and to go back to my friend, hey, this is what Christians do in the churches, and nothing happened. At the end of the service, the pastor said, hey, Brother Joe, can you lead us in prayer? And the guy stand, I didn't know how Christians pray. I kicked my friend, I said, how you guys pray? He said, just close your eyes and listen to the prayer. I said to myself, ah, he wanted me to close my eyes, then they can do bad thing inside the meeting. <laughs> and I pretended I'm closing, but I'm watching everyone around me. And let me tell you something. People around you, 
are watching your life everywhere you go. To say I am Christian, I am saved, is not enough. I am a believer. Let me tell you, Satan believed in the Bible and believed in God. Your life. People watching you everywhere you go. Are you representing Christ? And in our way back home, me and my friend, I told them, can you write your prayer for me? I'm really interested in knowing uh, how to pray in Christianity. And he wrote the Lord's Prayer. He gave me the Lord's Prayer. I took it home, his home, and I went inside the room, and I locked the door. I said, let me now study this prayer to attack Christianity in this prayer. And I sat on the bed, and I started reading the first line. Our Father in heaven. I started laughing. I said, what? They calling God Father? They are crazy. And I opened the window, and I started making fun of the prayer. And I started talking with God. Lord, are you my daddy? Are you my, my father? I can call you Baba, Abba. In Islam, no Muslim dare to call God Father. And while I am mocking this prayer, here is what happened, my friend. Boom! The Lord's presence in my room. And I felt him all around me. I felt his arm, even his face, next to my face. And he telling me, yes, I am your daddy. I am your father. Praise the Lord. It break my heart. I start crying. Because I never know God is my daddy. And that's a good news, my friend. Today is the day of good news. And we remain silent. People need to, to hear about that. God is my daddy. God is is my father. God is your daddy and your father. Good news. And the church kept it. They didn't want it to share it. Like my friend. He's a chicken. He's a he afraid. Are you chicken? Are you chicken? If you are not, go. Turn Aberdeen upside down. Your dad, your God is your daddy, your heavenly father. I start crying and I told him, why you left me 23 years? Why you left me 23 years? And I went to sleep. I wake up the second day. Something changed in me, but I can't explain it. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know the word of God. I went to the church. They took me to a conference. In Alexandria, and at the conference, there was a preacher. Stop preaching and say, Jesus can change your life. Jesus can give you life and change your heart. I said, wow. I was seeking that in Islam for many years. But Allah in Islam cannot change. But you, Jesus, can change you. And start touching me. I said, that's really good news. God can change me. And I took a side in a conference on my knee and I started praying. Just I didn't know how even to pray, but I only prayed this prayer. Lord, if you're really changing people, change me. Change me. Change me. Because I believe what the guy was saying. Your Jesus can change. And do you know what happened? Boom! Like a shower, the Holy Spirit came down over me. And joy and peace and boldness, you name it, like the book of Acts. The same experience, the apostle in uh, chapter 2. And I started speaking in tongues. And I am in Presbyterian church. <laughs> not Pentecostal, not Calvary Chapel. You know... It's not charismatic. Boo, 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 boo. Start praising God with a different language. 
and my life changed completely. That's your Bible. That's your book of Act. Go study your book of Act. You will see that Jesus is the business of changing people. And if you are here this morning, you have this desire to be a new person. Just between you and God right now, like I did, ask the Lord and tell him, Lord, if you change this guy, Muhammad, remember, you are looking at Muhammad Camel. It's not John. It's not George. It's not Peter. It's not Jacob. This is a Muslim guy. And he accepted your Christ, your Jesus. And your Jesus changed me. Your Jesus gave me life. And do you know why he brought me to your church? To tell you, hear what I'm doing in the life of people when they accept me. And my life turned upside down after this conference, after receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. And I decided, guess what? The third thing. I decided and I was praying, Lord, don't make me like Christian. I didn't want it to be like Christian. I didn't want it to be a chicken. I want it to be like Paul, like Jesus. And I heard about Daniel in my Bible study. My church invited me for a Bible study. And they're studying Daniel. I said, wow. And I start reading and hearing about Daniel. This guy loved his God. Witnessing to the king. God giving him vision and dreams. And his friends are strong. Shadrach, Meshach, Abdenagu. By the way, this is the right pronunciation. Your English is weird. <laughs> I will tell you a true story. I was in Spain. In the airport with my wife. And we heading to America. And we saw a lot of uh, Americans greeting each other. Saying, hey man, hey man. I thought they saying amen. <laughs> and I was excited. I said, wow, all Americans are Christian. <laughs> and when I landed to Dearborn, I saw the same people saying, hey, man, and bad words in between. I said, that's weird, the Christianity here <laughs> in America. But your English is weird. <laughs> and I studied the book of Daniel, and I saw how this guy decided Propose in his heart to please his God, even if it will cost him his life. I prayed and I said, Lord, this is the name I will take. Daniel Abdel Messiah, which means Daniel, the slave of the Messiah. And that's how my journey starts with my name, Daniel the slave, the, uh, the bond servant of the Messiah. But I go by Daniel Messiah because it's easy for American to pronounce Daniel Messiah and still say Daniel Abdel Messiah. And I start carrying the gospel everywhere in Egypt. Everywhere. I will go to the bus, crowded, not like your bus here. Crowd, hundreds of people. I would go to the middle and I would shout, Hey guys, have you heard about Jesus? And the whole bus start looking. This is our Muslim people. They never see anything like that. No Christian ever shout telling Muslim, Do you hear about Jesus? Do you read the Bible? And I start preaching like this. There is no fear. No fear in Christ. And I leave this bus to another bus. And I go to the high-rising building. I will go inside the elevator. And the minute the elevator closes, guess what? I have a captive audience. I will start telling them about Jesus until the door is open and everybody running. <laughs> I start praying, Lord, 
Give me ideas. And I made my commitment to share the gospel with 10 people a day. 10 people. I will not sleep. That's my commitment. Lord, I will share the gospel with 10 people every day. And I will count them at the end of the day. If I found they are eight, I'm missing two. Guess what I will do? I will go to the street. I will stop taxi. And I will take a taxi a couple of blocks. And guess who is number nine? The taxi driver. And this is number nine. I told him, after I share the gospel, please drop me here. And then I will take another taxi back home. That's number 10. How many people you share the gospel with every day? Are you working with the Lord? What's going on with churches in America? At least make a commitment to share the gospel with one person. You know, at the conference, I did, most, of, uh, most of the people, uh, they are Christian, and I found Ray with me in my room. I started sharing the gospel with him 20 times. No, I'm kidding. You know? <laughs> you know but w- what are we doing with the good news? Today is the, is the day of good news. And we remain silent. And one day I was in a taxi. Seven people in the taxi. I start talking about Jesus and giving them track and Bible. Sometimes I take four, five hundred Bible, give it in the bus. Going from a bus to bus. Because for me, I got shocked. God is my daddy. And I was in a taxi. One day... And I shared the gospel with the people in the taxi. And next to me was a Muslim imam, sheikh. And this sheikh or imam, he's doing like this. I'm I'm sharing the gospel, but he's doing like this. And I didn't know what the the guy do this for. And after I left the taxi, he was walking behind me. And he tapped on my shoulder and he said, I'm warning you. Don't ever share the gospel with Muslims. I was about to hit you, but someone was holding me. (laughs) See, you work with God, God will protect you. Guys, I'm going to very dangerous places. And I go because I work with God. He is covering me. And he will cover you. Don't be checking. Don't be afraid. And one day, I was in another taxi. And I shared the gospel in the taxi. And after everybody left, I stayed with the taxi driver. Now one on one. To give him the gospel. And after I talked with him, he said, Come on. Why are you sharing the gospel with me? Did you ever hear about a Muslim became a Christian? If you show me one, I will go to church with you. I said, me. He said, no, you're lying. You are a Christian. And you try to say that to bring me to church. I told him, no, here is my ID. And he saw my ID, Muhammad Kamel. And it's required in the Egyptian ID to mark one of two boxes, a Muslim or a Christian. And he saw the box Muslim. It's, it's checked. I told him, you'll go to church with me now? He said, yeah, yeah, give me your church address. I was excited. But this guy did not come to the church. He went to the secret police. And the secret police came to the church and arrested me. And they told me, you will just take you for half an hour. And you will come back. But this half an hour became eight months in solitary confinement. No bed, no cover, one meal a day, no toilet. Coffee can is my toilet with sharp edges. 
I used to take my shoes to cover the edges, to sit on it. You can imagine the health code in Egypt is terrible. Bugs, all kinds of smell. But I have my best time studying God's word. Because I smuggled one small Bible was under my sweater and they didn't see it. And I start reading and memorizing verses and story. That's what it helped me to stand in the persecution. And they transfer me to the attorney general. Before the attorney general, uh, they try to uh, make like, uh, 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 they put me to see the chief of the secret police before. And I prayed. I said, Lord, you didn't bring me here for those people to interrogate me. Give me a message for those people. And I told the guy, look, I wanted to share with you one, one verse from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. And this very famous verse. When Peter stand and said, there is no other name has been given to people under heaven except the name of Jesus to be saved by. And I read it to him. I told them, did you see the name of Muhammad? The name of Moses? The name of Abraham? So only the name of Jesus. And the guy does not like that. He said, you will stay here three nights with us. I said, that's fine. And they put me underground in a very cold room and they locked me. After three days, soldier came. They took me for interrogation in front of the attorney general of all Egypt. And when I went to his office, soldier around, I am in chain. And in fact, before I arrived to his office, I was in the police truck and surrounded by four or five soldiers. And while they taking me to the attorney general, one of the soldiers told me, why is he arresting you? I said, I was a Muslim, became a Christian. I said, you crazy, man. What are you doing this? And I start sharing the gospel. The whole soldier in the truck heard the message about Jesus. And then they took me to the attorney general. Attorney general started asking me who you are, your family, you know, and, and I'm praying. I said, Lord, give me a word for this guy. You didn't allow them to arrest me. You wanted to give them the message. And boom, the Lord gave me three questions. And the first question, I told them, Mr. Hisham, his name is Hisham Hamouda, and he's still alive until now. I told them, Mr. Hisham, I will ask you three questions. If you answer them, I will go back to Islam. If you didn't answer those three questions, you need to be a Christian. You need to read the Bible. And the guy said, go ahead. This is the Attorney General of all Egypt. I told him the first question, does Allah love you? Can you say Allah loves me? He said, I don't know. There is no promise in the Quran that Allah loves the Muslim or Allah loves sinners. I told him the second question, if you die today, where are you going? He said, I didn't know. You know, no Muslim knows if he dies where he's going. That's why they committed jihad, because only under jihad you can go to heaven, according to Islam. He said, I didn't know. I told him, is Allah able to change your life? Can you call Allah? To change you and he will change you. He said, no, Allah will never change anybody. You change yourself. I told him, Mr. Hisham, did you notice Allah does not love you? Allah will not take you to heaven. Allah is not able to change you. Why are you following Allah in Islam? And by the way, every word I'm saying, there is another guy is writing all this in record. And then he, he turned the table and he asked me the same three questions. He said, is God loves you in Christianity? I said, of course. God loves me. He came from heaven. And he died for my sins. I know God loves me. 
He said, where are you going if you die? Heaven or hell? I said, I'm going to heaven. And I can prove it to you in your room. And you can imagine, all soldiers are listening and their eyes are big. He said, how you can prove it? I said, I know who you are. You are the attorney general of all Egypt. With your signature, I will be behind the sun. I will disappear. You have the power to make me disappear from the earth. But even if you do that, I know I'm not afraid of you. I know where I'm going. I'm going to my daddy. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then he asked me the third question. He said, is God changed people in Christianity? I said, of course. That's why I'm in your office. <laughs> why you arrested me for? Because I'm a new person in Christ. And he decided uh, to ask me two sensitive questions. He told me, what do you think about the Quran? Is he the word of God? I told him, Mr. Hisham, don't be sensitive. Don't take it personally. The Quran does not worth three pennies for me. That's an expression in Egypt means it's false. And the guy who writes the report on his desk, he said, sir, do you want me to write this? Because this is blasphemy. He said, yeah, write this. He said, oh, Allah, forgive me. Oh, Allah, forgive me. Oh, Allah, forgive me. While he's writing. Then he asked me, what do you think about the prophet Muhammad? Is he a prophet from God? I told him, you know what? Muhammad can be anything, but not a prophet from God. The guy told him, Mr. Hisham, I, I need to write this. He said, write this. Oh, Allah. He started shouting more. Oh, Allah, forgive me. Because he writing with his own hand. Muhammad is not a prophet. And Mr. Hisham decided to put me for the rest of my life in prison. Solitary confinement, terrible, no shower, you can imagine. And they put me in a, the dirty room, and I start praising God, and I start worshiping God, and all the prisoners became suspicious because they lock me in solitary confinement. They started sneaking during the free time they have through my window and coming to my door, knocking. What is your crime? What you did? And I would say a Muslim became a Christian. So, wow! And I start sharing the gospel to all prisoners from my small room. My friend, let me ask you, how many windows do you have? You are not in prison. And even, even if they put you in prison here for the gospel, I have a good news for you. Your prison is like a hotel. <laughs> it's a hotel. They have clean food. They have a bed. They have a shower. They have nice bathrooms, hot water, cold water. They have a TV. They have courtyard. Why are you afraid of prison? Why are you sitting? You are not going to, to work with your father like Jesus. Jesus said, my father is working and I am working. My father is working. And he hired me. He said, you are a good servant, Daniel. And I start turning the whole prison upside down. The news went to the attorney general. They told him, this guy is sharing the gospel to all the prisoners. He decided to release me after eight months. Praise the Lord. And after, the, after I got released, uh, I got married and we went to... Spain and from Spain we landed in America and God gave us a wonderful baby uh, Joshua my oldest son and uh, I start 
doing some evangelist, uh, helping a church pastor in Costa Mesa uh, among Arabic people. And uh, my wife at the time, she was working to take care of kids, and she took my son with her. And when she took him to the house where she's taking care of, of the kids, the house has swimming pool. And he started learning how to walk. He was one year old. And while she is taking care of the other kids, Joshua starts walking. He hit the swimming pool door. It's open. It, he fell down and he died. And she called me, your son is dead. Your son is dead. Your son is dead. A pastor, a uh, friend of mine, he put me in his car. We went to the house. A lot of people around, a fire truck, police, yellow rope, and my son in the body bag. And she crying. And while she crying, I came down. I reached out to her, give her a hug. And I saw crying with her. And while I'm crying, the Lord whispered in my ears with the verse, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. When this verse hit me in my ears, the Holy Spirit told me what Jesus was doing yesterday. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. You, Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Go pray for your son. And I approached my son. And the police refused me to come close. They said it's uh, an accident scene. The other pastor said he is the dad. They allowed me to come close. I nail on my knees. And it was very short prayer. I have God's promise. He is the same. Guide, Jesus is the same. I don't know how I, how I can give it to you. With short prayer, I said, Lord, show me your glory. I wanted to see your glory. And guess what happened? My son started screaming inside the bag. They opened the bag. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they took him and they started treating him. They said, he is alive. He will live, but we need to take him to the hospital. And they took him to the hospital. And they treated him, and the doctor came with a pocket with water this size. And he said, don't put your hope high. Your, this water came out of his lungs. Your son will be vegetable. And with the English I have at the time, I didn't know how, how my son would be vegetable. I told you, your English is weird. <laughs> you know? Because I know the vegetable will eat. My son will be vegetable. I look at my friend, and he said he will have a brain damage. And the first thing the doctor said, he will not remember you. Don't put your hope high. He will lose his hearing or his sight. It depends where is the brain damage hit. And I went back to the reception room after I heard this bad news. I said, Lord, I never heard about someone you raised and he became vegetable. I am praying in your presence. If you heal my son completely, I will go anywhere you're calling me with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will share it even in risky area. And after a couple of hours, he in a coma, I tried to wake him up, Josh, Josh, Josh. Suddenly, Josh opened his eye and he did <coughs> like that to us. <laughs> That's how we play. The doctor said he will not recognize you. But the minute he did that, I know Jesus healed my son. I don't need any other proof. I carried him. I started shouting, Jesus healed my son. And he was wired to many machines. 
The machine stopped peeping in the nursing room. Everybody called, you crazy, what you doing? Jesus healed my son. Jesus healed my son. They said, okay, let us examine your son. And they examine him, and after they examine him, the doctor said, man, I heard about miracles, but today I saw one. Your son is completely healed. I will watch him 24 hours. If nothing happened to tomorrow, you come and pick him up. And we came second day, and we pick him up, and he is 35 years with two grandchildren, and Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, because of the time, I just wanted to encourage you that when you work with God, God will work with you. God will protect you. God will heal you. God will open the gates for you. You know, I got called to a mission trip in uh, uh, Kenya in a place called East Lee. And uh, at East Lee, uh, I told the pastor I wanted to go and share the gospel uh, with the Muslims there. He said, you know what, in uh, East Lee, there is no police, no army can get involved. If anything happens, you'll be by your own. I prayed, and the Lord gave me, if you open with me, Exodus uh, 14. In Exodus 14, I was reading before I go, and the Lord told Moses in Exodus 14, from verse, verse 13, he told Moses, uh, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. And verse 15 or 16. 16. What is in your hand? Lift up your rod. Three promises God gave me. Stand still. I will fight for you. What is in your hand? Use it. And when the Lord spoke that to me in, in, the, in Exodus, I told the group, let us go. I went with two pastors, five men, and seven women. We took a bus. We put the bus uh, outside the city zone because we didn't want it to risk the woman. And all the men started walking. And when you start walking in a Muslim area like this, East Lee, no army, no police can get inside the, 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 the city. We start to see piles of rocks. That's the housey stone people. And one of the pastors pulled me and said, Daniel, did you notice the piles of rocks? Do you still want it to do this debate? Because I will debate the imam inside the mosque. I said, yeah, Gary. We'll, we'll do it. Because I have God's promise. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. And he said, okay. And we'll start walking. And then the other pastor, Pastor Dave, pulled me. He said, did you notice the rocks? Are you sure you wanted to do it? I said, yeah. We'll do it. And we start going. And the mosque was closed. Only 10 Muslim uh, young people around the mosque. I said, salamu alaikum. I'm from Egypt. I'm from Africa like you. We are here because we love you. And I start asking them, do you have a Bible? Do you have a Quran? Anyone carrying a Quran? A guy raised his hand and said, open your Quran. And I start showing them all the verses in the Quran saying the Bible is the word of God. I wanted them to, to, to get the Bible. The Bible, and while they are looking, so, wow, the Bible and the Quran. A Muslim guy came running from my back. I, I hear him screaming, and he started to shoot all the rocks toward us. Pastor Gary and David got scared, and they told me, we need to go to the bus to check about the woman. But in fact, they are afraid. And they went to the bus, they disappeared. And the rocks start flying over. And uh, another guy came, uh, the first guy who was shooting the rocks, told me, 
Don't speak. Guys, don't listen to this guy. And he was very mad and angry. Another guy came from my front running, and I thought he was coming to hit me. But he came and hit the other guy. And the Lord told me, I told you, I will fight on your behalf. Stand still. And the news came to the mosque leader, the imam. There is some people making chaos around the mosque. He came down with a microphone and the speaker, and he starts out, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The whole city came out. Can you put the Kenya picture on the screen? Those are the people. And from 10 people became over 400 people because the imam was shouting in the microphone, and this is a call for war. Allahu Akbar! Allah. Next one. You see me, I'm in the middle. Next one. Or you, yeah, here I am in the middle, and I'm raising this booklet. I wrote this booklet, and it has all the verses in the Quran showing the Bible is the word of God. And guess what? After I share that, the imam took the microphone and he said, Mr. Daniel, now we believe the Bible is the word of God. And everybody started shouting. If you look the last uh, picture, they're raising their hand. And they wanted to get a Bible. And sadly, we didn't carry the Bible when we went to there, but the Bible was in the bus. And they followed us to the bus, and they got Bibles. But the funny thing happened, Pastor David and Gary came, and they left me with 10. Now they see those people around me. They came, and they sit next to me. And we have a password when you go in any mission trip. There is a password. When you hear the, ba the password, you need to leave the scene. It's dangerous. And the password was peanut butter. When you hear peanut butter, you need to leave. And Gary came next to me and he said, Daniel, peanut butter, man. I said, no, I can't leave. The, the guy is still talking. He said, peanut banana, peanut strawberry, all kind. He wanted to take me. I told him, no. And the guy started shouting. We believe the Bible is the word of God. And he cannot believe uh, what is going on. And then uh, he gave the microphone and he said, Mr. Daniel, introduce your friend. And I said, let me give the microphone to Gary because he is very scary. And he took the microphone. First thing he said, I am an American. I said, no, Gary, peanut butter, man. They will kill us now, <laughs> you know. And they start hugging us, and they followed us to the bus, and they got Bibles. Guys, this is what your God can do. He can protect you. He can change you. He can make you bold. You, you will not scare. He, you will not afraid like Peter and John. Guys, when I read that in the book of Acts, I said, if God gave it to, to Paul, John, Peter, why he can give it to me? Why he can give it to you? Do you know why? People does not take because they didn't ask not. If you ask this morning, Lord, I receive you in my heart, and you receive him. Lord, I receive your Holy Spirit in my heart. Lord, change me. I want it to be a new man.